Welcome to the Sparrow introductory session. Sparrow is an integrated DSP system code generation platform. In this session, we will have a quick overview of Sparrow and its use model. Why Sparrow? Typically, deploying an integrated FPGA or APSOC based system demands a steep learning curve and lengthy effort. It requires a variety of skills training on your coding expertise, software algorithm and driver development know how. FPGA tool expertise, good understanding of hardware aspects like clocking, resets, bus protocols, etc., system level knowledge, and expertise on various board level aspects. Sparrow helps bridge the gaps in these skill sets and also reduce the time of deployment significantly. With Sparrow, integrated system development can be as simple as dragging and dropping the desired hardware and software components from its leaf library and making simple data path connections between them at an abstract level. Complete systems that typically take several months and a sizable team to develop can be implemented and deployed on the target systems in a matter of few days by a much smaller team using Sparrow. With Sparrow, users can automatically generate integrated Verilog of RTL code, C++ algorithms and MATLAB models, software drivers, and FPGA build scripts simultaneously. The Sparrow platform is also bundled with the PC interface software that interacts with the target board to capture and analyze output samples. This includes wavelet reconstruction and highly accurate spectral analysis using a combination of FFT and CHIRP Z transform or CCT as well as derivation of various signal quality parameters. How does Sparrow make it easy to generate integrated systems? There are five high level steps to the Sparrow based system code generation flow. Let us take a look at each of these five steps. The first step is to capture the system schematic using the highly intuitive Sparrow front-end graphical user interface. The data connectivity between the components can be made using simple connection lines without the user having to worry about system level details like clock and reset connections, software buffer management, hardware constraints development, hardware to software interface logic, etc. The schematic can have hardware that is very low RTL components which are displayed in blue, software C++ algorithm components, uh, the green boxes here, and hardware to software interface components shown in yellow. Here is a Sparrow schematic capture GUI. You can see the component library in the left pane. There are hardware leaf components, there are software leaf components, there are hardware to software interfaces, etc. This version of Sparrow supports Siding's Zing based Z board and AD9467 ADC eval board. Let me quickly implement a schematic for capturing samples from the ADC, decimate and filter the samples in hardware, subsequently take the filtered samples to the software partition for further processing, and then take the final output to the PC. First, drag and drop the ADC component. This component logically represents the RTL code and the drivers required to interface with the ADC board. Connect the output of the ADC to a decimator. Select the desired decimation rate using the property pane. Now connect the output of the decimator to a hardware FIR filter. Select the filter parameters as needed. For instance, let me make it a 48 tap filter. The FIR coefficients that need be loaded into the filter can be specified using the init param entry GUI later. Now connect the output of the filter to a hardware to software interface component. This component logically represents a DMA engine and the related driver code. The output of this component can now be processed in software. 
we can now add software algorithm components on this output for processing the samples further in the embedded target processor. Let me go ahead and add a software filter. In order to capture the output of the software filter in a PC, connect the output to a schematic output port and give the desired name. Let me name this port test out. Give a name for the schematic and save it. Now we are done with the schematic required for capturing the ADC samples, decimate and filter them in hardware, further process in software, and finally capture and analyze the output in a PC. The second step is running the Sparrow code generated backend program that generates all Verilog RTL code, C++ code, and build scripts corresponding to the schematic. During code generation, the user can select various target platforms including SATC's Windows, SATC's Linux, Zboard, and a few more developer platforms like RT, Arduino, etc., depending upon the version of Sparrow. The Sparrow code generator also supports generation of MATLAB scripts corresponding to the software partition in a given schematic. There are also options to select different clock rates for implementing the hardware partition depending upon the target system requirements. In the third step, which is optional, the initialization parameters for various hardware and software components in the system can be entered according to the functional requirements. The driver code generated in this step is executed at the time of target system power, thereby initializing the hardware and software components in the specified order. The fourth step in the flow is to run a third party FPGA tool like Silings Vivado to generate the bitstream and ELF executables from the Sparrow generated Verilog RTL and C code. All the build tickle scripts, implementation constraints, and other build setup that are required to execute the bitstream generation in the FPGA tool are also auto generated by Sparrow. The user simply needs to source the top level tickle script from the FPGA tool after the code generation step. The fifth and the final step is to launch the bitstream and the ELF onto the FPGA and the processor on the target port. If there are software output ports in the system schematic, the sample data from those ports can be captured in the host PC using the Sparrow control and capture application. The control and capture application includes a signal waveform display, FFT spectrum display, CCT spectrum display for zoomed spectral analysis, and a coherent sample wavelet display in case of standing waveforms. Various parameters like THD, SFDR, SNR, SINAD, and ENO, along with a list of harmonics, are also derived and displayed with the FFT spectrum. The captured samples as well as the derived parameters can be written out to files for future analysis. Here is our control and capture GUI. I have a Z-board powered up now with a Sparrow generated 16-bit NCO sine wave source running in the FPGA and connected to the PC. Let me capture the sine wave samples from the FPGA and analyze them. Click on the collect sample button and press yes to confirm. And here is the captured waveform. For FFT analysis, let me enter the sample rate that I used. That is 245.76 megahertz. Here you can see the generated FFT spectrum that used Blackman windowing and various signal quality parameters derived from it. Let me now generate a CCT spectrum around the fundamental frequency. Here is a zoomed CCT spectrum. In case of standing waveforms, I can also generate a coherent sample wavelet 
by rearranging the samples received according to their relative phases using the derived signal period. And here is the current sample wavelet, which is essentially all the wavelets in the captured waveform folded on top of each other. You can also zoom in near areas of interest in any of these graphs. Depending upon the application requirements, the users can choose from various flavors of Sparrow. The Sparrow Pick is a free three months evaluation version intended to get the beginners going with the basic DSP system implementation using industry standard FPGA books. Other higher versions of Sparrow are available under a paid yearly licensing model. The higher versions of Sparrow include richer hardware and software libraries with advanced arithmetic, DSP, and system utility component. Detailed documentation about each version of Sparrow can be found in our official website www.logosan.com. From the home page, go to the Sparrow DSP System Generation Tools page under the products menu. In this page, you can find a summary of hardware, software, and schematic entry capabilities that makes Sparrow an optimum choice for integrated DSP system developers. The link to a downloadable PDF document that contains the list of library components supported in each version of Sparrow is also provided. Let me open the PDF document. A dot in the Sparrow's version column indicates the presence of a given component in the library of that Sparrow version. As you can see, the components are categorized into various types, including arithmetic components like adders and multipliers, dividers and root of small squares, bit operators like AND, XOR, inverts, shift, etc. Generate DSP components like filters and modulators and decimators. Signal sources like NCOs and linear waveform generators. System utility components like timer or PWM, MMR write registers or MMR read registers, which can be drag and dropped various board support components, and many more. In order to learn more about a specific version of Sparrow, click on the corresponding Sparrow logo. The respective page will have a sample schematic that leverages some of the components in the specific version of Sparrow and some additional information on the supported features. You can also contact us at info at logosan.com for additional information on any of our products. To install Sparrow Pick, which is a free eval version on your PC, go to the Sparrow Pick web page from the Sparrow Generation Tool homepage. Click on the request download link. Enter your email ID and password to register. Provide the MAC ID of your machine after completing the email verification step. You will receive an email with the download link and a three months evaluation version license. Download and install Sparrow from the link. Sparrow with evaluation features is ready for use. Thank you for watching the video.